The danger of my life will build on the swing. The other day, I heard the story of Isaac Lopez and the goblin on the swing. It's such a terrifying story that it may seem hard to believe. I warn you that if you are watching this at night, maybe you prefer to wait until tomorrow to be able to sleep. But if you are one of those who does not know fear, go ahead. Isaac Lopez is from Puras Negras, Coahuila, and he is 22 years old. His story happened in June last year, when he went with his cousins to spend the weekend at his grandfather's ranch. They arrived on Friday at 6 in the afternoon, and the idea was to stay until Sunday at 8 at night. Yet what was going to be the weekend of their lives? Ended up turning into a terrible nightmare. Although they had all kinds of comforts on the ranch, they decided to sleep outside as they did as children. Therefore, upon arrival, they set up the tents. Then they started to prepare dinner. They put the drinks on ice and grilled the meat. Isaac, along with another cousin, went for firewood at the back of the house. This reminded him of his childhood, when they helped his grandfather cut wood. For the development of the story, it is necessary to know what Isaac's grandfather's ranch was like. The land of the house was very large. In the front there were soccer goals, swings, a slide, and a seesaw. That is the ideal place for children to play for hours. But also the perfect setting for a horror story. But let's go with the latter. The grandfather fixed it as a kind of workshop. There they had the necessary tools to fix anything. And also from there you could go directly down to the river. How many hours had they spent in that river? Of course for Isaac the ranch was the closest thing to paradise. And associated it with all the good time he had spent with his family. However, for a few years now, he did not like to walk alone in the forest. The silence of nature made him feel strange. He said it gave him the feeling that someone was watching him. It's funny because when he was little, he loved to go in search of adventure among the trees. That feeling really started when he saw the Blair Witch Project. Understandable, right? Let's go back to the story. Isaac and his cousin were looking for fire wood in the back. Then suddenly branches caught the young man's attention. There were some branches that were tied with a rusty wire, forming a cross. Remembering that he had once seen a similar object in a horror movie, Restless Isaac showed them to his cousin. At that very moment he had taken other pieces of firewood, exposing another composition of branches that looked like a voodoo doll. Both of them found this very strange. Isaac repeated to himself that nothing happened. To make light of it, he said to his cousin that surely the grandfather had made them to pass the time and it had simply thrown them there. Then they returned with the rest of the cousins. They ate, drank thing, and remembered the good old days. The hours passed quickly and without realizing, it was two in the morning. The cold was beginning to take its toll on some, and three of them went to sleep inside the grandfather's house. The other five stayed there. They didn't want to miss the opportunity to sleep under the stars. They kept chatting until they started telling horror stories, because the bonfires lead us to tell mysterious stories. Isaac was faithful saying that there are many places that transform into the darkness of the night. Where weird things happen without anyone noticing. Next then relating it to what Isaac had said. The older cousin said that he was once with his father in the same ranch on the banks of the river. And they began to hear some screaming, which then turned into laughter. They were in tears and ended up cursing them. The cousins asked him why he had never told it. But he just shrugged. A shiver ran through Isaac's body. He decided it was time to go to sleep, because the next day they were going to get up early to go fishing. Although after these stories, he didn't know if he was going to be able to sleep. When he said goodbye, everyone followed. Isaac slept with another cousin in a tent, and the other three in another. Suddenly in the middle of the night, not knowing what time it was, Isaac got up to pee. He put on his glasses, went to the place where the car had been parked, and peeked to the side. He could hear the cars passing by on the road, and the noise of some animals. The cows, owls, and boats. The typical sounds of the countryside. Isaac took a deep breath, inhaling the scent of nature. When finished, Isaac turned and felt his heart stop. When in the distance, in one of the swings, he saw a silhouette that was swinging. He wanted to think that it was one of his cousins talking to the girlfriend. But still, he returned to the tent as fast as he could and without taking an eye off the swing. When he laid down, he noticed his body trembling uncontrollably. Take a deep breath. 
And when he was about to calm down, the sound of a gun met his ears. It was a bleak full of suffering. It cried out in pain. However, none of the cousins could hear it. Dalzik plucked up his courage. He put his glasses back on up in the tent and went outside. What he saw left him frozen. Next to his car was a boat staring at him. With a sinister look. Then he started walking. Very slowly towards the swings. Suddenly the goat began to run making strange noises. Then unexpectedly he started walking onto legs. But the worst was when he got on the swing. Then he started to swing while screaming in pain. Isaac was shocked. And when he'd react he went to wake his cousin who was sleeping next to him. He woke with a start and accompanied Isaac to the door of the store. They both stared in terror at the boat on the swing. Now he had started to laugh, and although he did not look directly at them, they felt that the screaming, the laughter, everything was directed at them. The moon was so bright that it illuminated its two moving legs, and the other two holding onto the swing. What the hell was that? Isaac couldn't take it anymore. He started to vomit when the goat jumped off the swing, and started crying again. Once Isaac recovered, he ran off with the cousin to the grandfather's house, who was waiting for them at the door, trembling and as pale as his grandchildren. With a tearful and breathy voice, he said, I had heard it speak, but never walk on its two legs, or do what it just did. Isaac did not know what to say. He understood that perhaps the symbols he had seen that afternoon made with the branches were not a coincidence. Finally decided to go find his cousins. He went to the tent without looking at the goat. He woke them up, lying to them, saying that Grandpa felt bad. Though everyone entered the house and was safe. Inside, they could only hear the screech of the swing and the usual sounds of a girl roaming the field. They all went back to sleep, except those who had witnessed the macabre spectacle of the goat. Isaac and his cousin. It seemed like their heart was going to leave their chest. Both got up and went to the room where the grandfather was also awake. He drank coffee, cried and trembled. Isaac asked him what was happening to him, but the grandfather just whispered that he was scared to see it walk on both legs and run like a person. Isaac tried to reassure him, but the grandfather interrupted him, saying that the other night there was a knock on the door. That was strange because being a ranch with large rounds, it is difficult to access the inner door without first passing the four gates that are closed at night. The grandfather continued saying that with the knock on the door, someone shouted, Pancho Pancito opened the door, it's cold and then gave a mocking laugh. The old man explained that it was the same voice as that of his late wife, Isaac's grandmother, who had passed away in 2011. The two young men were terrified and full of questions. They knew that pressuring their grandfather in these circumstances was perhaps not a good idea, but at the same time if they had more information, they could help him. Isaac thought there was a possibility, but not remote, that someone wanted to play a prank on his elderly grandfather, the grandchildren of the neighbor of the next ranch. Not really. He had seen him up close and knew that the thing about that boat was not a costume. These thoughts were interrupted by a knock on his grandfather's table. Then he was staring at the window in front of him. Isaac and his cousin followed the exact spot. Then they saw in the distance like a goat had approached and looked at them with a sinister smile. The cousin screamed. Isaac tried to control himself, got up and closed the curtains. The two young men prepared tea for their grandfather and accompanied him to his bed. The poor man did not stop shaking. They should call a doctor, but how would they explain this? What happened was a somewhat crazy idea. The grandchildren decided to stay with their grandfather here a little. They come little by little the eyelids were closing. However, he tried hard not to fall asleep. Isaac needed to understand what was happening. What information did his grandfather have? We all said happened of. Suddenly, as if he read his mind, the man slowly joined and told them. If I sleep, it will appear as it did a few days ago. It will look at me and whisper in my ear that I have to go with her, and I don't want to. The two young men looked at each other in astonishment. Why would their grandmother be hanging in the forest at night like an evil spirit? Why would she want to harm her husband? They left those questions in the air. They didn't speak again all night, and they didn't close their eyes for a second. The next day, they left after breakfast. But nobody talked about it. Although Isaac begged his grandfather to go with them, he was unable to leave the ranch. However, Isaac was never going to return. The story does not seem strange to us. The truth is that it is not the first supernatural story that happens with a goat, and besides that they are associated with the devil. 
I don't know something creepy like that. We can only expect it from pets and dogs, right? What do you think? Who gives you more bad vibes, a black hen, in the middle of the night or a goat swinging? Do not want any other terrifying story related to vote. Tell us in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you are scared. Until the next video.